um, so I have to bring out the fur coat, you know, like Mama Bear about to share. <laughs> ah, that rhyme, that rhyme, that rhyme. Hey guys, another Monday, another vlog. Good evening. Uh, so, yeah, basically, I want to speak about my birth and delivery story, but mostly everything leading up to my induction. Um, I think I have a positive story. I had nothing traumatic, nothing, especially as a first time mom. I'm really grateful for that. But one thing I also realized, one thing I can definitely say is that the process of giving birth or delivery is just as much a mental process as it is a physical one. And so it's not just about being physically ready, you are fit, you did, you know, some exercises, you were trying to induce your baby as much as it is as well, preparing your mind, preparing, um, like going through those fears that you have, not fears, the fears that you have, speaking through them, um, educating yourself, learning about the process of delivery, learning about the lingo that the your your birth team is going to use and the doctors so that you actually understand, um, understanding that both um, options that you have or all the options that you have, like if there is complications and it goes to cesarean, what does cesarean entail? So that when it does happen, you're not freaked out or you're not like completely scared where you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't prepare my mind for this and that you really, really are so against it and you're like, I don't want to get it, that you can't actually enjoy the delivery and because you're just like, I didn't want this. Whereas the outcome is you wanted a healthy baby to come out. So I think preparing yourself mentally for me was important and is what I did and is what can make me say confidently that it was a positive, positive birth and I... I absolutely loved it, to be honest. It's, it's, it's amazing and it's beautiful what our bodies can do. I probably will forget some details. To be honest, I'm going to be very, very honest. I do not remember how the contractions felt. Like, as much as it's always like, oh, the contractions are the worst. I think they were uncomfortable, but I wouldn't necessarily say, like, the worst. Um, for me, it was more like the postpartum recovery that was worse actually than giving birth just because I tore a little bit first degree so I think that was worse than giving birth giving birth I literally said to my gynecologist I was like so why did you not tell me that tearing was worse than giving birth like it is worse so basically this will be like my positive uh, induction story because I had to be induced I was 40 weeks and two days uh, she really didn't want to come out. She was a little cozy in there. And so, to be honest, my preference was not to be induced. I had it as one of my preferences. I don't want to be induced. I really felt like, you know what? My body knows what it needs to do. Uh, God created it that way, whether it takes over 40 weeks. So, surely, there's a reason why my baby ain't coming out now. So, when the time is right, my body will prepare for, for birth. And so, I had a conversation with a friend of mine. Uh, with my sis uh, follow and she was like, you know what at the end of the day firstly your guy knows what he's doing He's seen many births and has obviously there's a reason why he is suggesting an induction And so instead of having like fear over it rather realize that at the end of the day The outcome will be what you want which is your healthy baby in your arms in this world You know rather than focusing on the method in which your baby is delivered and I think that kind of put me at ease and really helped me see that you know what it's God's I need to trust God and it's God's timing at the end of the day whether or not it's induced but um, at the same time my baby being there longer um, after some time the placenta does not actually serve its purpose and isn't actually providing nutrients to the baby I don't know if that's after 41 weeks or after 42 weeks but after some time over 40 weeks then the placenta stops providing nutrients to the baby so that's why sometimes they'll induce right so if you have been offered the option of induction i know it sounds scary and you just would rather i, I pray literally that she comes before the day of induction so the week before at 39 weeks um on the thursday uh actually i think it was a tuesday because she was supposed to come on she was supposed to come on the 26th she came on the 28th so on the tuesday they did a little um check cervical check and I was two centimeters dilated. So Gaini was like, oh, okay. Or maybe it was a Thursday. Yeah, actually Gaini. Gaini was like, okay, let's see how the weekend goes. Who knows, maybe she'll come on the weekend. And uh, you know, no need for an induction. Let's see how it goes. So I was like, oh, 
I was the most excited human being about being two centimeters. I was like, oh my gosh, she's gonna come. I'm sitting on my yoga ball. I'm literally, listen, I'm like, I bought dates. I'm like, I'm eating dates, putting them in smoothies. Dates taste horrible, so I'm putting them in smoothies. I'm trying my best. I'm going for curb walks. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying everything, right? And um, the Tuesday, well, obviously 40 weeks comes, which is a Tuesday. But I think the Wednesday was a public holiday, the 27th. So, um, Gaini says, obviously, if 40 weeks passes, then let's do a check after. Um, and then if not, then you'll have to come in. So, I was checked in on the Wednesday night, which is the 27th at night, um, to be induced on the Thursday at midnight, which is basically like Wednesday night. Um, so, she didn't come. Still two centimeters dilated. On Wednesday, I start feeling very weird. Like, I have diarrhea, I'm, I have a bit of a fever, headache. I'm just like, I don't understand what's going on. Is everything okay? Is the baby okay? Also, I'm like, today she didn't move a lot. What's happening, you know? So I go for a check. Um, firstly, like, the nurse was like, are these all like COVID symptoms? Are you sure? They do a check, it's not COVID. So I just go back home. She's like, maybe it's nerves. Maybe you're nervous. And so just try to re relax and rest. And, and I think I was a bit like nervous about everything. Um, I probably have mentioned it before that I used to have this fear of dying giving birth but interestingly enough throughout the pregnancy that was not even in my thoughts I'd not think about dying giving birth I'd not even on the day I was like maybe when I get to the hospital I'll worry about that or when things you know go sideways but my plan firstly let me just share like it's so important to have like your plan your preference um, written down and shared with your gynae and with your birth team um, from the get-go because I think on my 37th week I kind of spoke to my gynae about things that I prefer and I asked all the questions that I wanted to so I used to actually write it in a book um, I don't know so my book is somewhere any questions that I had in the week or, or whatever or when I was listening to a video on YouTube or I read about something and I'm like hmm, what's this how come my gynae didn't tell me then I write it down and I ask my questions and so I, you know, would ask, like, so are you okay with me playing music um, during that time? Are you okay with candles, with scents, and um, with, like, essential oils? Because also at the same time, as much as it's my birth experience, also he must deliver the baby. So next thing he's allergic to lavender. And getting that all got a lavender scent, and I'm there, like, ooh, you know? And it interrupts everything. So it was really amazing to know that he was okay. He was like, whether you have candles, whether, whatever makes your experience better. If you have music, do that. Um, actually, I asked my husband to make a playlist, which I don't know, baby, did you make a playlist for me? A music playlist? He didn't say. <laughs> not really. So he didn't make a playlist, but it was fine, because actually in that moment, I did not want <laughs> any music. I didn't want music. Um, but what really helped me, and I don't want to lie, and I'm going to link it below. I'm going to link firstly my, um, my playlist. I called it Mama. My Mama playlist of the videos that I watched preparing myself for birth. The best thing you can do for yourself, mom, is and partner of mom, is to really learn like the breathing techniques. That really, really helped me. Even at times when like hubby was like, breathe, and I didn't want to. It was also nice that he um, watched the videos as well, so he could like help me and guide me through the breathing and the kind of breathing I should do when I was like, it's a lot. So I didn't do any um, antenatal classes. Um, I think we wanted to do, but it just never happened. And I procrastinated and also, 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 also. So we didn't do it, but I think I once read somewhere, someone was saying that actually like a video that I watched was like more informative than some of the antenatal classes. And when you're in that moment, all that knowledge, you can have all the knowledge, but it can go out the window when you're in that moment. So I was like, do I really want to spend money on it? No, I don't. So um, the day comes, I'm super excited. I'll share some footage, either maybe at the end or in between actually, where I was getting ready to go and I was in my silk PJs. There's a whole story about those PJs that cost like an arm and a leg and I was like, never, never. I got them from Cotton On. I mean, I was just like, really, this is how much you guys are spending on PJs? Really? Like, okay. So, um, yeah, but anyway, I love them. So, anyway, super excited, really key. Nothing's happening still on this night, which is a few days after my um, due date, um, a day after my due date. So, get to the hospital, they check me in, and then... Um, 
at midnight they insert the whatever inducing gel i'll ask my guy what what it was um because when i like watched a lot of videos about induction most of them was pitocin which i don't know if that's an american thing because yeah in south africa maybe i'll just share what it is here so you can find out the side effects i didn't do my research to be honest and i didn't ask much so uh, my preferences going in was i don't want an epidural i really wanted to be able to move around i wanted to be mobile as far as possible like right off the birth i have heard that you have to stay and then you have to get a whatever like catheter to pee and sometimes people have back problems there were there were there were just as many pros as there are cons so don't let me scare you many people get it and are fine with it but some people get it and have major side effects or have back pains forever so i was just like if i can push through that will another one is i don't want to have too many cervical checks and i'm grateful for like the platforms where they share about like your rights as a, a mama that you don't have to just go with everything that the gynae or your birth team says or they have to check you all the time because that also like if your mucus plug has fallen off can cause risk for infection sometimes because they keep now sticking up there so i was just like no unless necessary don't do it check and then leave me until i'm like i'm in pain then you need to check again so um she, the the nurse puts in whatever at 12 literally 30 minutes later i have back pains and if that's contractions then i started my contractions 30 minutes after this induction but i couldn't tell what it was i was just like oh this pain oh oh okay i feel this pain whatever whatever um, and I have I usually have bad period pain so I think I would just scale it as almost the same in the beginning and then I try to take a hot bath I, I don't know if it was a salt bath but I take a try to take a hot bath just to like ease me into things and just like help me <laughs> and this was at like 2 3 a.m. I did not sleep at all you know I've read something where they say you know try sleep in between contractions I get you guys I can't I could not for the life of me sleep throughout contractions since midnight actually obviously i didn't sleep the day before the wednesday obviously i'm up you know because i'm up and then and i thought maybe i'd get some sleep and then Gante, i didn't sleep until i gave birth at 10 a.m so basically i was probably up for more than 12 hours but luckily luckily if i can tell you something um is you know sometimes they say you can't eat like um when you are already like um induced or when you're already giving birth what i did is i prepared my body by having a lot of like electrolytes and having things that help my body to have energy to sustain me for the delivery so what i did was i um would have co i had coconut water um the whole of wednesday and preparing me for my birth and i had a lot of like electrolytes and different things so i had oats uh, which is really good for you in pregnancy do take it um i think i even shared about it on on my instagram like um one of the posts I had coconut water. You can have electrolytes and different things, right? Um, I had like, you know, like it's in peppers, it's in lettuce, it's in apples, it's in all those things. So I took those as a way for my body to be like hydrated and to have the energy that it needs to sustain it naturally. And so I was not that tired, but literally throughout the contractions, at first the nurse was like, oh, you're in contractions. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. Like, So this whole thing of like, I couldn't time like, oh, I could feel that it moved from like, four minutes you know every contraction was four minutes whatever i was just in my back was in pain i couldn't lie down it was very painful to lie down i don't know share your experience <laughs> if you were able to lie down because i tried to be on that bed and i couldn't i had to literally sit like this there's this one video where i'm literally like doing this and literally just whoo, hoping that it goes away and so yeah then what happens next what happens next what happens next what happens next that's three four five six I think six starting something starting to happen i have this urge to push right i don't know if that was around seven nurses like don't push don't push what they want to do and i keep wanting to go to the toilet i probably went to the toilet a lot right this is the process before and then she was just like okay now she checks again mind you i think around five or whatever when they check again after this process of inducing me i was still two centimeters explain johnny 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 I was still two centimeters dilated. I'm like, Ngek. now I'm tired of this cervical check. I'm like, I, every time you'll check me and I'll just be two centimeters. Also, how isn't this thing meant to work? 
and then that was like five right after i tried a bath and everything and now she's showing me or letting me know what a contraction is and i'm seeing on the monitor um they're trying to see like how baby is she's falling asleep now because they can see by the heart rate and they're just like oh please drink apple juice so we can try to wake her up and we need to see blah 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 so i let them know what my preferences are i also wanted actually <laughs> this video is all over the show i actually wanted to um first i wanted delayed um um clamping my cord clamping so um there's still a bit of um time with the placenta connected to the umbilical cord with baby and i also wanted to take my placenta home Heidi was like no um i was gonna eat it <laughs> in my mind i didn't i did research and i was like learning about it and i was like oh okay so there's some benefits to it maybe i should try it hmm it helps might help with postnatal depression and you know um it's nutrients blah blah blah, blah you know so i'm like maybe you know i'm being like oh one with nature and all <laughs> but Abby was like, no. Ew, what are you gonna do? You're gonna put it in a smoothie? Where are you gonna keep it? You're gonna put it in the fridge with the hour meat? What? No. So, yeah, anyway, I forgot to take it. And also, I had to do an affidavit to so that if they stop me, I have an affidavit that says that I took it from the hospital and they've given me permission. So, I forgot to do the affidavit and then I just left it. So, it was at the hospital. Um, yeah, let me come back. Ooh, it's already 15 minutes. Okay, let me come back. So basically, that is the process thing. Then, delivery. I think I think my delivery was around about 40 minutes. Because I gave birth at 10. So from midnight to 10. So it's 10 hours of contractions. But mind you, it's mild. So there's three stages of labor. You have pre-labor, or it's early labor, and then active labor. My active labor wasn't long. Like, where I'm like, oh, oh my gosh. Um, also, I gave birth, I gave birth like this, like I was lying on, holding on to the bed and I was kneeling, right? So I was like this. I didn't give birth on my back. That's also something else that having done research or just listening to many people that it would just be better. So I actually wanted to be on all fours on the ground on my yoga ball. Left my yoga ball at home. Um, also then I was just like, it, this still works, right? So that's how I gave birth, which is really amazing. My doctor was like, you can choose your position, girl. Like, whatever you want, squats, whatever. I'ma bring the baby. So I was very happy that he was open-minded about that. You should do your research so that you can also, um, have the experience that you want. And also kind of helps to reduce hearing. I still tore a little bit, but I think I know why. I think it's because as I was pushing, it was time I got tired. I was just like, ooh, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, but I'm pushing at the wrong time. Like contractions and must wait, then push. I'm pushing at the wrong time, and there was a time where, as I stopped, her head was already coming out, so it was just there crowning. And I stopped, and it was just sitting there. So imagine it's sitting, stretching, stretching, and I think that's how I told. Um, and then after that, then I pushed. Um, it wasn't major, didn't need stitches, um, so it was just first degree. Painful, painful, painful. But I'll discuss all of this in the. Um, postpartum recovery video that she about recovering uh but yeah it was really amazing um i think i will add a bit of the the video just like a little bit um obviously hides and stuff but um i think the rest of it will just be for for our memories and i think part of it was a blur which is why I wanted like hubby in the background, but I also like wanted to look at the video again because I'm like I don't remember much. Like to be honest, I just remember all of a sudden, oh my baby's here. Another thing is I didn't have that like, I didn't have that like, oh my gosh, like I'm crying, the most precious thing in the world. I didn't have that. I was just like, oh, I pushed. Oh my baby, wow, like oh my gosh, like my miracle is in my arms. She's here and she's so cute. And I'm trying like, what do you look? Like, and I'm like literally trying to scan everything like hey don't if they suck my baby me I want to know my child I'm like this is how she looks this is what she has <laughs> but luckily um I was in a room of my own um and baby got to stay there hubby was in the room as well which was really nice um we gave birth at Kingsbury Hospital in Clement uh I think it's part of net care I think oh the time went so now as I'm pushing right <laughs> breathe breathe and i'm like i don't want to breathe there was all these little things that like get to you at that time i was in so much pain guys so much pain that there was a point where i was like i want an epidural now the nurse even had to say are you sure and that's to ask click on you like 
are you sure is she sure she wants it like because i she said she didn't want it so is she sure she wants it i was like give it to me i am enough it doesn't matter now what happens just give me an epidural so my baby can come and then so they were actually going to give it to me then they had to do one more check to see like how far i am then they're like actually hi the baby's on the way you're seven eight centimeters dilated baby girl prepared to push we're calling the doctor in so yeah sorry we can't give it to you and i was like, I was even like, okay, let's do a C-section. But in my head, I was saying that. I was like, listen, even a C-section at this point would do because I'm tired. It's been 10 hours. I couldn't sleep at all because contractions don't let me sleep and it was too painful to be lying. So I got all the alarm. This baby must come out, honestly. But I'm so grateful that I managed to do everything naturally. Um, and I can honestly say that it was a positive like induction, no complications no major side effects or allergies or anything like that um there's a lot of things that happen in postpartum recovery to be honest um especially as a first time mom certain things that you don't know but <clears throat> yeah if you have any questions you can ask in the comment section below and then i'll answer them when i do the postpartum recovery video which i'll do uh which will probably be the next video after this so um, we can chat there and let me know how far you are, how you feeling and I'll definitely share um, I'll share it now, but I'll also share in the link the The playlist and the videos that I watched by Bridget Taylor, which really helped She's a doula and midwife and she's from America But she's so amazing and so helpful and the breathing techniques I learned from there and literally that is the same grace breathing to breathe mama just breathe <laughs> just breathe and everything will be okay so you're gonna be fine i think the takeaway for me honestly was just that in god's timing and just to trust the process to trust my body and you know throughout the contractions i was just like saying thank you thank you jesus thank you god and i was just like i'm about to meet my beautiful baby i can do this my body knows what it's doing you can do this you're about to meet your beautiful baby thank you and i was when I reflect back, I was so grateful. My most grateful, like it actually brought me to tears, was the fact that I made it full term. You know, whether or not actually anything happened, there were complications, I had to do a C-section, whether or not I didn't make it giving birth to my child, whether or not my child didn't make it. My, my gratitude was many people don't make it to full term. Many people don't make it to 40 weeks. I managed to 40 weeks, uncomplicated pregnancy. Um, I didn't have any like uh, issues with high blood, diabetes, all of those things. I'm grateful. Wow, my body, for the first time doing this, could actually reach full term and even go a little bit over because this baby didn't want to come out. I am grateful that I had that experience, God, and that was enough. So it was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And would I do it again? Not any time soon. <laughs> in like four years' time, in four years' time. Not any time soon. Ah. Also, another thing is like, oh. My periods came back shortly afterwards, but again, that's postpartum, so enjoy! Do subscribe if you aren't already subscribed, and I'll definitely be sharing more about my journey, motherhood, my breast cancer journey, and also having other women on in October when I do speak about Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and um, just lifestyle.